Good evening and welcome to Gateshead International Stadium for this National League Vanarama encounter between Gateshead and Hartlepool United. A North East game, do you call it a derby? Some say yes, some say no, but what I think it's going to be is an exhibition of great football between two North East sides here this evening. Gateshead, of course, if they win and results go their way, they can climb as high as fourth on goal difference. But that's a lot of ifs and buts, and Gateshead will only have to concentrate on what is happening here this evening. As will Hartlepool, their season as well hasn't really ignited as of yet, and probably a little bit too late to reach the playoff situation. But they'll want to make sure they don't drop down near towards the relegation zone because it is quite tight down at the bottom of the Vanarama National League. And uh, I'll say, my name is David Gaddis. It's an absolute pleasure to be with you. I'll be joined by Mark Carruthers very shortly. He's doing his little bit of stuff in the corporate area. We'll just do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you're watching on National League TV, a massive thank you for joining us. We hope that you enjoyed the game as well to our audio listeners on the Heed Army podcast. And if you're watching on the YouTube stream for, for the audio, that is, uh, if you'd like to hit subscribe, that would be very nice. We have got messages coming in as well. So if you'd like to message us throughout the show, we can. And um, and uh, Cow Daly has sent us a message and said, I'm incredibly nervous for this encounter. Well, I am as well, because I think Hartlepool are a better side than what the league position shows. So we'll have to really uh, be at our best from a Gator perspective. And also, as well, we've got Anne Scarfield. Uh, Scarfield has put uh, one thing, let's get stuck in Huawei. And um, there's more messages coming in. So please do, don't be a stranger. If you'd like to message us, let us know where you're listening from in the world. That would be much appreciated. I do have the teams here. Um, I'll read them out very shortly. Um, the teams have just went back in after going through their warm-ups here on what is a brisk night at Greater International Stadium. It's... Um, oh, it's bitter. It's absolutely bitter. Um, but I've got a heater on and underneath the commentary table, so don't worry about us. We'll be all right. But um, we're going to go through the starting lineups for the visitors now. It's Pete Jameson in goal, David Ferguson, G uh, Joe Gray, Manny Desiru, Tom Crawford, Manny Oroesi, and Terrell Aguiman, Tom Parks, Kwaku Odu, and uh, Nicky Featherston and Luke White. Uh, Waterfall uh, is make up the starting lineup. I'm just having to move because the commentary position here is very tight, and my co commentator has just arrived, so I'm just uh, letting him get in, and I'll go through the substitutes when I sit back down. Apologies for that, everybody. Um, right, you. Oh, there we go. We're, we're all sorted. We hope you're comfortable at home. We're comfortable here now. On the bench for Hartlepool, Joel Dixon, Callum Cook, Louis Stevenson. Courtney Tufus and Che Cooper for Gateshead. It's a home debut for Nathan Harness. Robbie Tinkler, Kent Richardson, and Louis Story make up the back three. It's in midfield. We have Ed Francis, Regan Booty, and Callum Whelan and Ben Warman. Luke Hannon, Kane Adam are the wing backs, and Dejon Brown will start up top for Gateshead. On the bench, it's a strong one. Tom Allen, Marcus Denanga, the captain, Greg Ollie, Ben Warman, and um, Joe Grayson, I've said Ben Warman twice because it says it here on the uh, team sheet. That should be uh, Kieran Evans is in the starting lineup here. And I'm joined by my uh, co commentator here, Mark Crothers. Uh, welcome. Uh, so you've just been doing your little bit in, in, uh, in, the, in the posh area, uh, warming up the, the, the guests in corporate. 
posh area is a bit of an understatement, I think. But uh, oh, uh, sorry, overstatement. It's, it's, um, the, it's the illusion we're trying to paint. It's, it's, it's just yeah, words. It's glamorous swans strolling around and stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, support of Ben Clark, obviously someone well known to both clubs. Promotion winner with uh, with Hartlepool as a player. Um, played in the the uh, promotion final, the playoff final. Sorry, in League One, but unfortunate defeat um, against Sheffield Wednesday. And obviously, gets a legend as well. Player, captain, uh, manager, coach. Uh, still working at the club. All, all, all round good guy. Just yeah, one of the very best people in football. Um, but looking forward to a cracking game here. Um, you know, players on both sides that have started hitting a little bit of form recently. Um, obviously, Hartlepool maybe on on the season. They thought they would, but I look at that squad and having well, sort I, of worked closely with. I alluded to that just before you sat down. I said I think the league position doesn't do them justice with the team that they've got and of course they have had the managerial change uh, halfway through this season but Kevin Phillips a man that you know well off covering the North East non-league team when you he was at uh, South Seals you were there the day he was unveiled and you followed his progress there and uh, an exciting young manager and uh, nice to see him doing it in the North East. Yeah I mean obviously Kevin's a legend in the North East does he before he did at Sunderland um, and you look at it and going into South Shields it was many people thought it would be an easy gig you know decent budget and league that wasn't really full of big budgets. Um, had a bit of a, a disappointing start where they, they lost in the playoffs against Warrington Town, but then got them up second season, uh, as many expected. Um, and then just things, you know, went a different way and he parted company with them. Got a great opportunity at a fantastic club in Hartlepool. I mean, you know, I mentioned it last week on a podcast I did with um, Michael Nelson, Michael Barron, or Mickey Barron, sorry. Uh, they're a football league club and everything but status for me. Uh, you look at the, the support tonight, I think well, about yeah. over 1,200. See, uh, well, with that in tune, you, you've seen what I was about to go into there. The away following is absolutely phenomenal on the far side. So any Hartlepool fans that didn't make it up, be proud of your support. They're going to be loud. We've already heard them in the warm-up. They're on the far side. I do feel for them a little bit because they are open to the elements here at Gateshead International Stadium. As are we, but we do have a little bit of a, a shelter above us, as it were. But across the far side, uh, they are open to the howling wind. And um, it, it, it's nigh on tropic here if you live in the North Pool. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, this is pretty standard for the International Stadium, to be fair. It's, uh, it, it's not, not too bad at the moment, but I think we both know that uh, give, it, give it a couple hours and we'll be... Uh, well, let's just say it's a good job. We've got BBC Newcastle beside us. Yes, they can uh, warm us up. We can lean into them, yeah. Um, but um, if you're just joining us on National League TV, massive thank you uh, for joining us. We hope you enjoy the game. And uh, we'll call it, as we say, yes, we are the home commentating team, but we don't uh, sugarcoat anything. We'll cover as we see the game, because if you don't, you get found out pretty easy, don't you, Mark? <laughs> you do, yeah, you certainly do. <laughs> seen a few uh, a few commentators from National League TV fall foul of... Uh, a few uh, well-known Twitter people. Yeah. Well, well, hopefully we, we 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 come out smelling the roses on that case. But uh, we'll we'll not uh, set ourselves up from massive fall. Oh, we have. Though. Yes, I, I'm, I've, I've managed to get through the team shoot without any mistakes. <laughs> so if anyone has been a regular, they'll know that uh, dyslexia and commentating you wouldn't think go hand in hand. But um, <laughs> I try my best. But uh, all joking aside, uh, we are set up for a fantastic game here. Now, Gateshead versus Hartlepool United, Vanarama National League. Uh, as I say, you've got a little bit. Well, we've got about five minutes if you want to get your cup of tea if you're listening at home, and uh, or even a, a cold beverage and settle down. This one promises to be an absolutely fantastic game. It always is between the two sides. Um, I think my, one of my first commentaries was against Hartlepool, uh, a 2-2 draw. I got a little bit carried away on that one. Uh, you learn your lessons, though, Mark. You learn yeah, your lessons. Live and learn. And, um, but, yeah, well... Should be an absolutely fantastic game, and uh, these are the games that you you want. You want to be playing a, a, a local side that are of a big reputation. Well, I think Rob Elliott said that earlier on today, didn't he? That these are the games you want to play, and as a player, you know, I'm at pains to call it a, a derby because there's not really a historic rivalry between the yeah. two clubs. It's two northeast clubs. That's fair enough. Um, I, I don't think you can force a derby out of this one. No. Um, you know, I, think, I think it's a friendly rivalry because, of course, many seasons yeah, ago, good, well, 10, 10 seasons ago, of course, Gateshead's pitch famously died here at Gated Stadium. Uh, Boxing Day being the nail in the head against uh, Barrow when the ball actually stopped on the line from a thunderous shot from 18 yards. That tells you how bad the pitch was. But, of course, Hartlepool lent us their home for, I think it was up to eight games, wasn't it? And um, thankfully, we stayed up that season. And, and Gated fans are forever thankful to Hartlepool for that. Very, it's, uh, I think so. it's, it's, been a, it's been a nice relationship. We should say absolutely no such issues with the pitch today. It looks fantastic. It certainly does, not it? And uh, you mentioned, obviously, a player before that uh, played for uh, Hartlepool in Ben Clark. 
there's been a number of players. We had James Brown, of course, uh, come to Gateshead after being at Hartlepool, and uh, the, the Turnbull brothers. Uh, we've had quite a few uh, players that have played for both sides. Ken Richardson. <laughs> yep. Ken, Ken Richardson. Stone. Yeah, yeah, there we go. There's uh, one in the actual starting line up there. Marcus Denanga as well in, in the current squad. Yep. And spell uh, on loan. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the, as I say, it's going to be a great occasion. And our two highest ranked non league clubs in the region, um, two great clubs that are. You know, trying to strive for better, um, and hopefully tonight will be a, a fitting occasion for for the region. Yeah, I certainly hope so. Um, but uh, as I say, if you are joining us, thank you very much. It, uh, we are going to we'll go through the teams again very shortly before uh, the kick off. And um, the, just to say, mentioned before the uh, far end where the Hartlepool fans are in the east stand, they're still teaming in at the back. There's yeah. some of them are standing up the back there, I think, to try and get out the wind. Um, but a, a magnificent support there and also here in the home end uh, looking to our left and right it's filling up nicely here so hopefully a good 2,000 plus crowd here to witness this uh, so it should be you know, a great advertisement not just for North East football but for North East non-league football and um, it pains me to call it North East non-league football because two professional sides but that, that's the, the world we live in um, but you know, both of these sides looking, striving to grow and tonight, Gates said, looking if they can win tonight and results go their way, if uh, South and United can win at Solihull, Gates said could go as high as four from goal difference. But that is the ifs and buts. And we're not we're not in the business of ifs and buts. We're in the, we're in the uh, business of results, Mark, and goals. And hopefully we have a few tonight and get everybody excited to enjoy this game. And um, oh, Mark, you were in corporate there. There was a few familiar faces. Was Lenny Lawrence in there as he well? He was in there, yeah. Lenny still integral at, uh, at Hartlepool. Obviously had a couple of games before Kevin Phillips was appointed as a as a caretaker manager, interim manager. Uh, vastly experienced. I mean, again, well known in the region from his time at, at Middlesbrough. Doing a, did a decent job there. So, it's uh, yeah, it was great to see. There was a few more meant to be in there, but uh, unfortunately uh, weren't. Um, so, yeah, Big Ben Clark got up and um, had a good chat with him about his time at Pools. Oh, fantastic. And of course, Ben Clark was at a talk-in with the Gated Souls Supporters uh, Foundation Club. Well, I'm trying to think what we call it. The owners of the club, uh, part owners, um, celebrating the five years of what's been achieved here at Gated in such a short space of time and what could become very exciting towards the end of this season if Gated can carry on their way as they are going. But at the moment, Gated are led out by Ed Francis. And uh, Nicky Featherston brings out Hartlepool. This is how the visitors line up this evening. Pete Jameson, David Ferguson, Joe, uh, Joe Gray, Manny Desiru, Tom Crawford, Manu Orozori, uh, Terrell Agimang, Tom Parks, uh, Kawaku Oduru, uh, Nicky Featherston and Luke Waterfall. On the bench is Joel Dixon, Callum Cook, Lewis Stevenson, Courtney Dufus and Che Cooper. And this is how the heat line up tonight. It's Nathan Harness making his home league debut here after joining on loan from MK Dons, Robbie Tinkler, Kent Richardson, Louis Story make up the back three. It's Kane Adam and, and Luke Hannant will be the wing backs. In midfield, Regan Booty, Callum Whelan, Kieran Evans, and um, Ed Francis. And up top will be Dejon Brown. On the bench, Tom Allen, Marcus Denanga, the captain, Greg Ollie, coming back from injury, having played 30 minutes uh, since the first time since November on Saturday. And Ben Warman, and it is Joe Grayson on the bench as well. Who's birthday today? Happy birthday, Joe Grayson. So 25 today. And uh, well, we're about to get underway. Uh, looking at Hartlepool, big physical side they look. Uh, there's a lot of tall boys there. Of course, Gated, not the most physical side in the world. No, we're not, uh, you know, a team that will play it high in the air. So they're going to prove a physical presence on uh, set pieces and corners. Yeah, funny enough, I was just thinking that when you were talking there. Um, you know, Gates had obviously got a couple out as well. Obviously, the, the loss of Mamadou Joe being recalled by Cambridge was a blow. Um, Gates had, a, you know, what are going to get with Gates? They're going to keep it on the floor. They're going to try and pass the way out. They're going to play that style of football that, you know, everyone's, everyone enjoys seeing. Um, Pools will, will try and nullify that just as they did in the, the reverse fixture early in the season um, when the got a 2-1 win against Gateshead. Mm -hmm. well, um, I will say again, stunning show of support from, from the pool supporters over there. That's amazing. Well, we know they're famed for their last day of the season, yeah. uh, fancy dress and stuff, but they've come in their numbers today. Of course, not the longest of trips, but on a cool Tuesday night, it's long enough. Both teams in a huddle at the moment. Nice to see. A bit of unity from both sides. And we're about to get underway here as Gateshead will be shooting towards the River Tyne and uh, Hartlepool to the felon end. 
And for our audio listeners, Hartlepool in white shorts, white socks with a uh, dark blue and green, I think it is, or dark black and green uh, top, and gets it in their familiar white and black home top, black shorts, black uh, socks. And it's going to be Hartlepool that get us underway here. People still teaming in both ends. And I think someone's trying to be spot on TV there. They had the phone light up on the far side. So <laughs> if you've spotted whoever that was, tell, let them know you've seen them. I think I wouldn't see straight away where this is going. Oh, well, it goes back and it's going to be pinged out to this right-hand side as it is. It comes up, header one in the middle, and Story clears the ball out to this right-hand side. Got under control, though, from Jizawari, who is dispossessed. Evans keeps the ball moving. Nice little turn from Whelan, but there was a Hartlepool man there to intercept, and Hartlepool try and get the ball moving forward, but the ball comes off a gated man. It's been kept in on the far side, did run very well there, has Agimang on the far side, he's down to the corner flag, in. I thought he was going to play across there, but the player tried to play it in, run on to it, but it's played by Gated, only as far as Hartlepool player on the far side. I'll get familiar with names and numbers very shortly. But at the moment, Hartlepool... Showing some intent here, Mark. Yeah, really lively start from Pools, isn't it? Really positive. That's what they all wanted. Um, Gator just can't get a foothold in these early early minutes. Well, all down the left-hand side at the moment. And now the ball still over on the left-hand side. Ball played forward. Gator don't get the ball. And now they're on the attack. Hartlepool left-hand side. It's going to come in towards Odururu on this far side if he gets the ball. But the ball ran out. He didn't manage, couldn't get the ball from underneath his feet there. A Hartlepool player, and it is a goal kick. But dangerous signs from Hartlepool. They're, they're, they're on the front foot. Yeah, very, very positive again. Uh, good break down the left-hand side, just over on the ball. Um, it is hard to see what was happening there, but uh, it did look as if it was just a, a bit of a heavy touch that took him out of play. Good play from Gator. Good defensive player, stayed disciplined. Honest with a long ball up towards Adam. Adam. The ball, oh, tackle. tackle, great tackle. Good tackle. Out it goes, throwing here halfway inside the Hartlepool half. And uh, we've we actually seen a, a little bit of a change in tactics here because Kane Adams down the left hand side. Yeah, I was just thinking that before. <laughs> yeah. So Rent Kent Richardson, ball just kicked out of play there. Another throw integrated, same place. As Adam gets the ball back to Richardson. Booty. But he's going to play it down the line to Adam, but it comes off a Hartley good player and another throw, this time level with the corner of the box. And Regan Booty going to try this ball off. And he's going to go for the long, long throw. Booty story gone forward. Um, in it comes. A little bit of shirt pulling there. Ball cleared though. Should have pulled from both sides, me out. It wasn't a, <laughs> it wasn't a rose tinted um, comment there, but brought down well by Gray. Plays the ball down the left hand side. He's still got it. Now Hartlepool try and cut in into the middle. There's a war. Returns, gets the shot off straight at Harness, but the ball bounces away from him. And Robbie Tinkler was there to help mop up, and Harness just clears the ball up the pitch out a dangerous way. And well, we start said that they're on the front foot. They're picking up the second balls pretty quick there as well. Yeah, get touching you know all about the threat of uh, Manny Dizdwarver. You look at he scored obviously twice down at uh, at uh, the Suit Direct Stadium. Uh, oh, well there we go, and it's a goal kick. There's appeals for a corner there. Obviously, he was called up by England C last week as well, wasn't he? Played in that game that uh, against uh, Wales. Um, a real I mean, a great season. He's been such a good signing. You look at what he used to do when he was at, at Halifax. Exactly the same, isn't it? It's just that big. He's Stature at the top end of the pitch, holds the ball up well, great in the box, and just sniffs out chances. Well, Francis, who was an England C teammate of Manny's, and now comes across to Tinkler, brings the ball forward. Looks for the run of Whelan. Whelan's went through the middle, but the defender's going to get there in front of him, clears the ball <laughs> nearly into the path of Dijon Brown, where it's been hooked clear, and Gator can carry under control for Richardson to Tinkler. I think they're looking for a runner through the middle, but I think it's going to go across the defence. It has to Louis Story. Back into the centre of Robbie Tinkler. Whelan drops deep to get involved. Booty out on his left hand side. Plays the ball down the line. Looking for the run of Adam, and Adam opens up. But 
Defender gets the end. Well, waterfall. Brilliant from waterfall. Really read that well, didn't he? Got in front of his man. As Adam nods into the middle of the Dijon Brown, brings the ball down, needs some support. Whelan can play it over to Hannant. Five minutes gone, nil nil. If you all just join us here. And Gateshead starting to get into their familiar passing game. But Hartlepool started the better, you would have to say, and he's opening opening exchanges. Tinkler. Tries to play the ball through the centre, but it's blocked. Dizawaru. Dispossessed. Kieran Evans drives forward with the ball. Now he's got Dijon Brown just there who puts it round. Can he pull it back across? He was asking too much, but wins a corner. I think he probably should have given that back to Kieran Evans, by the way. I understand being a striker why he's gone for goal, but both of the Pools defenders have been attracted to, to Dijon Brown and left Kieran Evans on his own. If, if Brown gets his head up and just looks around, he's got a free pass and... And a free shot of goal. Good defending, though. Uh, Luke Waterfall, massive signing, by the way, for uh, for Poole's uh, experience. Obviously, won the National League with Lincoln. Um, a big signing. I think he's impressed so far. Ed Francis. Gated's captain this evening. We'll take this corner on the far side in front of the travelling fans. In it comes. It's a deep one. Been headed away, and it's going to bounce out for another throw. On this left-hand side, Regan Booty comes over. The one thing you're going to say is because obviously Hartlepool are a bit, bit of a bigger side than, than Gates said the set pieces have got to be perfect. Well, Ox is running, in comes the long throw. Dijon Brown didn't get on the head to it, but the loose ball is going to be picked up by Gates. Then Hannant appeals for him to shoot. It'll be a bit uh, speculative from there with the crowd of people, but at the moment, Gates are still in possession. Richardson on the halfway line gives it to Tinkler. Francis. Under pressure from Gray and does well. Tinkler. Is it Francis in the centre circle. It goes back to Tinkler. Booty, left-hand side. Pulled in a very good shape, Hartley Pool, but they didn't see the man on the far side. And Hannon can bring it down. Puts oh, it in ball. first time. Hannon has to control it. Turns back himself, gives it to Hannon. Oh, and cleared. Gates said. Don't manage to pick up the ball as it goes through the centre. But they do pick up that one. And Gateshead trying to carve something out here in and around the box. In comes the ball. It wasn't the greatest, but it falls to Whelan. Stolen off him. Last-ditch defending. And at the moment, this game is really open as Gray drives forward onto the ball. Forward. Harness gets back onto his goal line. He's got a man coming through. Defender goes, slips down. Pulled back to Zawaru. Didn't have the best control, but it does go back to his teammate. It's not over yet. And in the back of the net, it goes from a tight angle. Gray puts it in. And Gates said sixes and sevens at the back. And, well, the counter-attack was absolutely clinical. Yeah, I'm quite surprised Joe Gray wasn't closed down. I mean, he's such a talented forward, Joe. Still a young lad learning his game. But what a finish that is, by the way. So composed, a really narrow angle. But Gates said defensively all over the place. Uh, a really good start from Pools. You mentioned that they've started the better and they've got the reward for it well Gates had had been camped out in and around the area but they didn't make it pay and they paid the price for committing a lot of men forward but it is uh eight minutes gone here i think it was scored in the eighth minute it was i went in the ninth minute now sorry it's one nil to hartlepool here at Gates international stadium joe gray on the score sheet as the rain starts to come down here now fine mist we can see it in the floodlights and the game is definitely alive, Mark. Well, it's been a really lively start, hasn't it? And, and as you say, Poole's been the better side. Um, I'm just quite surprised to say Joe Gray wasn't closed down when he's gone down the left-hand side there. So a couple of Gator defenders didn't really make the decision. You Score, he puts the ball to Hannon. It was a bit of a hard one, but gets a throw in anyway on the far side. Louis Story is asking for the ball. He's going to be the man to take the throw. Is it to Kieran Evans? It's a story. And there's a appeals for a free kick from Hartlepool there, and it's been given one to Gateshead on the fast. I don't see pulled it back. Which one's he done now? I, I think, think it's a head injury. Head injury, yeah. I think it's Dizawaru that's down, isn't it? I can't see the shirt number from here. No, I don't think it is. 
There's a lot of complaining going on. I think maybe Yagi Man is it. But uh, free kick given to Gateshead. Or a drop ball was, anyway. Was Terrell, like, yeah. Well, we're back underway. Gates in possession. Ball over the top. Flicked on. Dijon Brown had to get there in front of Waterfall. He didn't. But Gates picked up the ball on the edge of the box. Shot from Evans. Oh, past the post. Well. To be fair to Peter Jameson, he's moved his leg really well across goal. I think he probably had that covered. But a bit of a sign in 10 from Kieran Evans, who's obviously started really showing signs of life that we expected to see from him. Yeah, I'll say the youngster on loan from Cardiff City. He's settled in well here. On life on Tyneside, scoring at the weekend. Really, you could have argued he could have had two goals on Saturday, but uh, the deflection and the rebound to Denanga. But young man that's plying his trade and learning here. As Ferguson just caught Harness there. Harness is... Still down, and Ferguson followed through on him there when he got the ball. But we hope that he's all right from a Gator perspective, because there isn't one on the there isn't another goalkeeper on the benchmark. I think he's all right. I think he just took a little clatter in there. Referee very slow there, wasn't he, to to react to anything? Yeah, seems to be all right. Up again and play on. Well, Harness gives it across to Kent Richardson. Richardson still with the ball, gives it to Booty on the halfway line. Back to Tinkler. Harness in the edge of his area, receives the ball. Back to Tinkler. Richardson looks for runners. Plays it to Evans and gives it out to Tinkler again, of course. Okay, so just looking for movement in front of them before they get the ball moving forward. And there's a ball through to Whelan. A nice run through to Dijon Brown. Oh, it's just got underneath his feet and he couldn't turn on it. Good defending note to get the ball away. But Gator can pick up the loose ball and try again. As Hannans gives it to Evans. Evans edge of the area. He's, was he brought down? He was. A foul free kick. And a dangerous spot. Uh, four yards outside the box. Right hand side. And uh, well, Evans... He was, he was on his way forward. He I was just stop him. I was just about to say how, how disciplined Hartlepool have been so far in these opening minutes in defence. Um, but that's a really naive challenge. I mean, I don't think he needs to make it. There's plenty of defenders in front of him. But uh, this is a chance for Gateshead. Ed Francis stands over the ball, as does Evans. But I think Francis is the one that's lining up for it. That rain is starting to come down a little bit heavier. Maybe on the surface a little bit greasier. Will that have an effect? Francis steps up and puts it. Oh, oh. hits the post. The ball and it's in. It's offside. offside flag goes up. Whelan did put the ball headed in, but he had straight off. And it isn't going to count. Unbelievable but, uh, freaky cred, Francis. That I, I'm not sure if Jameson got a hand on it, you know. I, I couldn't tell you it happened that fast, but for a brief second, I thought it was going to bounce under the bar and in. But uh, great strike. Deceiving. It did, he didn't seem to hit it that quick. <laughs> and then it just seemed to whip. But 40 minutes gone, Gateshead nil, Hartlepool won here at Gateshead International Stadium. If you're just joining us. There's the ball, nodded clear by Kent Richardson, nodded on again. Dijon Brown holds the ball oh, up, does nice. very well, lays it off to Hannant on the far side. And now Gateshead can build across the back as it comes to Richardson. Evans gets involved, gives it to Tinkler. Well, if it isn't Evans and Dejon making a run, it's Adam and Whelan making runs in the middle there. So the, the Hartlepool defence, they're going to have to stay very alert because there was Whelan on another run, but the ball goes to Dejon Brown. Was he fouled there? Referee says no. Great tackle. Great tackle. Stood up well there, Ferguson, didn't he? Nodded for what? Whelan. Bit of a blind ball there, and Hartlepool pick it up in midfield through Crawford. Great tackle. Tackle on the far side. Ball comes still in play. Ball played all the way back to Harness in the gates of goal. But Gray, he's alive way. He's always there closing down, isn't he? He's rapid. Yeah, I mean, he's come through the, the academy. Pool is really highly rated. Um, it, it, 
someone that was linked with the move away from Pools a few years, well, a couple of years ago. Um, I think he's got a real opportunity to make a name for himself at Pools, and you've seen hints of what he's about in these uh, these opening sort of 15 minutes. Just a real talent. I mean, he couldn't ask for a better manager, really, when you look at forward players. Yeah, he's, uh, he's going to have a, a great year to to talk into and get some advice when he needs it. But okay, Gate said, the story. Cross to Booty. Ball dinked over That's towards right. Whelan, headed back. Good, Good. defending. And, uh, well, Whelan just trying to peel away into space, isn't he? I think he may have been offside there, by the way. There's things Luke Waterfall in the middle of peeling for it. I think the ball got to him. Yeah. He may well have been off. Well, Jameson kicks the ball right up towards Tizawari. Ball goes out of play for a gated throw. Has been the worst reaction from Gates at full mind of you know, trying to impose themselves on, on Hartlepool, get that ball down and play. Ball over the top, though, for the run of Kane Adam, and he's trying to chase it down, gets in front of his defender and holds it up. Nice bit of footwork. Can he pull it back across? There was nobody there if he'd had off. But now Booty pulls it in and poor cross in there. And Hartlepool held their shape well, it has to be said. As Gates said, trying to pick up the ball in midfield. They do through Booty, but good tackle. As oh. Well, Kent Richardson won the ball right in front of us there. But the free kick has been given. Yeah, foul on Tom Crawford, I think it was. Um, the referee's always going to side with the player that's uh, the, the, where the player's coming in behind, isn't he? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an awkward one because he, he did pull the ball back, but the leg comes in from behind. The referee's going to give the benefit of the doubt. Nicky Featherston taking this. It's one thing Pools will have is great quality, David Ferguson and uh, Nicky Featherston out to tip up balls and areas to, yeah. to really threaten Gateshead. He's no stranger to score in the world either as Featherston. As the ball played forward for Gray, who gets past and there's Kent Richardson to poke it out and it goes out for a corner on our right-hand side. Well, this is the first test of that Gateshead backline in terms of set pieces, isn't it? So we'll see, see how they cope with this. It certainly is. Well, the big side and we can see their athletic Hartlepool. They're going to be trying to put it right in the mixer here. Players all jostling on the edge of the box. The runs have made. In comes the ball. It goes towards the back post. Nodded across. And it's, oh, headed off. I don't know if it's headed off the line, but it's headed out the six-yard box. And Gates had tried to get the ball away for a quick attack. But Hartlepool pick up the ball. As Aggieman now has it. And plays it back to, oh, great. Oh, nice little run. Kent Richardson with two crucial interceptions to put the ball out there. A lot of uh, athleticism in this uh, in this Hartlepool side. You look at the movement, um, causing Gator all sorts of problems when they get in that final third with, with that movement. And uh, Gator just a bit all over the place defensively at the moment. Featherston going to take this corner. Oh, he wants to move the ball. Slightly different setup for this corner. In it comes, but it's going to go towards that back post again. Header one over the ball and out for a goal kick. But as I say, they've got some immense targets to aim for, Mark. Yeah, but the movement again has, has killed Gates a little bit there. The corner that came in before that one, you're looking a man free back post. It's a simple bit of movement, but he's just pulled away uh, from the, the main group in the box and, and really should have done a bit better with the header. Um, yeah, real threat again from Hartlepool, who started this game really, really well. Well, Kent Richardson brings the ball forward to Booty on the left-hand side. Booty just turns his man, plays it across. Whelan, right-hand side, he's got Hannant there, who he uses. Hannant looking for movement himself, cuts inside, gives it to Francis. Back to Story. And Gates had moving the ball pretty well, but there is a good bit of pressure from the Hartlepool players trying to close down the space as the ball comes back to Booty from Adam he's on the edge of the area pulls it across and oh Evans just couldn't control it it's up in the air Dijon Brown battling for it hooked clear by Hartlepool but only as far as Kent Richardson in the centre circle and Hartlepool regather the shape as Evans just gets back to his feet there it's Dijon, isn't it? oh, there's Evans. yeah and uh, he's walking a little bit gingerly hopefully he can run that off I think there's just a clatter of feet as they 
This is when he ran into the box before. Francis puts the ball over to Booty. He's still hobbling Evans, but Francis has the ball in the centre. Puts it back out to Booty on this left-hand side. Whelan turns. Looked like he was going to line up for his shot there, but Story has the ball. Puts it out to Hannon, right-hand side. Can he get a delivery in? There's shirts in there. Up towards... The, oh, Kane Adams there. Can he bring it down? Goes for the shot. Oh, into the arms and chest of Jameson there. Didn't get the cleanest of connections, but the keeper did well. Yeah, great block from Oni Rousey. Um, Jameson, I think if there's more of a more of a touch there, he's in trouble. It's just fallen nicely to his hands. But uh, yeah, better from Gateshead. But again, it's not really a massive threat yet. They no, they haven't really imposed all. themselves at all. Gateshead holding the ball up on the far side. Ball forward to Whelan. Whelan plays it inside back to Hannant. Hannant, was he fouled? The referee says yes. Free kick. 20 yards inside the gates at half. Quickly taken. Cross to Kent Richardson on the left-hand side as he can bring the ball forward now. Adam. Just dispossessed. And, well... Well, <laughs> the player got himself in front of the man. Knew what he was doing. It's clever. It's, it's really clever. clever. Well, Pete Jameson, uh, Jameson, former Blythe Spartans and York City goalkeeper. He's going to be the man to take the free kick here. Now he takes the kick. Ball goes across one in the air by Hartlepool, but there was Robbie Tingler just to intercept and disrupt, and now Gator can try and build with Hannant. Whelan on the right-hand side, back to Hannant. Francis plays the ball back. Oh, it's some speed to harness there, but he did well. I made sure I got there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if the club on National League TV will reimburse me for new underpants uh, on, on that one, but uh, we've got Tingler, plays the ball across to Whelan. Plays it through the centre. Dijon Brown has the ball. Lays it out now to Hannant. Needs a delivery. If he can get past his man. Cuts inside of it. There's Francis in space. Gets a shot off. And oh, oh great oh, save oh. by Jameson. He got down to his right-hand side. And what a whip and curl. Francis got on it from outside the area. Yeah, really smart goalkeeper from Jameson. I mean, you know, I've admired Pete for, for a long time when he was at Darlet and mentioned that spell at Blythe when they were pushing for a playoff place in the National League North. Done that for years. Great save. Got it away from goal. Well, Kieran Evans is going to take this corner to our left hand side. In it comes towards the near post, headed clear by the first man. And now Hartlepool can try and break with this one. The ball over the top. There isn't anybody there, but the ball can come all the way through to harness. Takes a touch and plays it forward to Francis. Booty. Ball over the top, looking for the run of uh, Whelan. It's going to have to be absolutely inch perfect with this defence. They're, they're very good in the air, quick as well. And it's the smallest man in the pitch they're aiming for. <laughs> <laughs> There's Ed Francis. Whelan over to Louis Story. Peels for handball. You can see why. <laughs> There's Richardson on the halfway line. Gives it to Booty. Hooks this left-hand side. Plays it into the centre circle where Tinkler's waiting. And then bright orange boots. Now Story. Right-hand side with Hannant. Looking to get a delivery. And he does. And it's just, well, way too much on it. And out it goes for a goal kick. Yeah, poor. Poor from Luke Hannant. Had, uh, had a bit of time there to, to really cause a threat to the Hartley Drew back line. Just got too much on the cross. But, um, yeah, it's been a really interesting first 23 minutes. Quite similar to the game down it down at Hartlepool where obviously Hartlepool went in front and then uh, Gates had enjoyed large swathes of possession without causing too many issues well, Jameson going to take this goal kick we're about to go into the 25th minute if you all just joined us it's Gates at nil Hartlepool United 1 and it was Joe Gray with the goal on the counter attack as the ball bounces through Harness scoops it up as Dizawu was coming on to it Richardson brings it forward down the left-hand side. Just crosses the halfway line. 
was looking to put it out to the right hand side but gives it to Adam back to Richardson looking for the run of Dejon Brown it's going to go out of play though and uh, yeah, you could see the idea on that the gates of bench isn't too happy with the movement I think it was more that they were looking for the cross field ball I think Francis just pointing out that uh, Luke Hannon was on his own right hand side uh, but again I think Hartley feel quite comfortable there they're sat in and just I think Hartlepool's making the right moves in midfield to stop those crossfield balls there because they've point. closed them down slightly. But Ed, uh, Kieran Evans does very well. Plays it down to Adam. Can he pull it back across? He can. It's too much on it. And uh, Ferguson brings it down, chests it down, appeals for handball from the home crowd. More hopeful than anything else. And Gator can build again. Hopeful would be an understatement. <laughs> it certainly uh, would be. Cool and compost from David Ferguson. Uh, Adam gets oh, past well. his man. He's got space, he's got time to cross it in. Can he pick out a teammate? Takes down dead ball line, pulls it back across, wins a corner. And well, just hoping that will get to make move that ball a little bit quicker, but still got a corner for his troubles. Looks a threat, doesn't he? Adam yeah. started uh, started well down this left hand side. It's gonna have to be a better delivery than it was last time from Kieran Evans, though. Well, he's moving a lot better than what he was five minutes ago. We have a corner here. In it comes. It's a bit more deeper. This one towards Story nods it back across. It's up in the air. France uh, Whelan does very well to mark it off. Oh, and cleared by Hartley Pool as Joe Gray does some defensive work on that far side and clears it out. Nothing silly. Gates said take quick throw in. Of course, multi ball here at Gated Stadium. Tinkler. Plays ball through to Dijon Brown. He holds it up well. Can he? Oh, oh. space to pull down. Referee points the spot. It's a penalty. He turned quickly. Hartlepool might feel a little bit aggrieved, but he did get the ball away. I don't know yeah. if that was a goal scoring chance, Mark. It, it, it's irrelevant. I think you, you look at it, and the one thing I'd say is no one's complaining from Hartlepool. So yeah. that to me suggests that it, it is a penalty. It looked a penalty at first sight. Um, great touch, great ball into him as well, but uh, a lovely touch in turn. Um, big chance for Gator. Well, Luke Hannon is going to be the man to take the penalty here. That's the. Tain and we are stand holds its breath. The referee gets into position here. Jameson tries to make himself look big. Hannon steps up, puts it in the back of the net. It went in in slow motion. It looked like Jameson might have got a hand to it there, but it's 1 1 here. Luke Hannon with the penalty, and we've got the game definitely back on here. Yeah, really, really good penalty. As you say, it didn't wasn't the biggest connection on it, um, but he did perfectly directed. It's a yeah. great penalty. Jameson's gone the right way, but just a uh, really, really good penalty from Luke Hannant. Um Yeah, as I say, Gateshead's reaction to falling behind has been been a positive one, but uh, it's, it's game on now, isn't it, Dave? Well, 28 minutes gone, and it's 1-1. We're about to go into the 29th minute, and the Tyne and stand has come alive behind us, and the away fans, well... I say there wasn't too much complaint either from the other side when he went down. So, from their perspective, but this game has a lot of life in it and a lot more goals, uh, dare I say. This is a battling with Kent Richardson. Ball goes out off Kent Richardson's head. Bit of cracking first half hour, isn't it? It has, yeah. It's, uh, it's been an interesting battle, hasn't it? As Otteru tries to turn. Ball goes out of play for a gated throw. Richardson quickly takes it to Tinkler. And of course, Robbie Tinkler, it's only about his fourth game back from his long injury as well with a dislocated shoulder. He had to have an operation. And he's back for the run in. Notable he's playing in the middle. Yes, as a Louis Story has played that. Uh, Dare I say quarterback role for Gateshead. A lot comes from the, the centre of defence for Gateshead and the build-up. There's a ball down the left-hand side. Adam trying to get there. And uh, strong physical presence from Onorasi and clears the ball out of touch for a throw to Gateshead. Did everything right until the clearance. Well, Regan Booty is going to take this throw. Mm. 
launches it into the box up towards Louis Story. There's a lot of jostling. The ball falls in the box. Hasn't been cleared yet. Now a shot off. Oh, and Adam nearly scored an absolute corker and a replica of what he did on Saturday, but past the post this time. That ball moved in the air there, didn't it? It was going all over the place, but uh, I don't think it was ever really threatening uh, Peter Jemson's goal. Well, take the time to take our breath here. As Jameson is going to take the goal kick to our left. All in green. Two shades of green, may I add. Gets its goalkeeper in pink. I am a stickler for, like, say, a goalkeeper in a green strip. But is the ball being headed clear? The way it should be, Dave. <laughs> Black boots as well, Mark? Yes. As old oh, Dejon Brown closing down, Jameson. Does well to clear it, but only as far as Tinkler, who brings it under control. Richardson. Let's see two former Gates of players in attendance here. In Alex Richardson and uh, Alex Nicholson, sorry. And um, Robbie. Uh, I can't get Robbie words wrong here, but not wrong, right wrong here. Is Egan Evans tries to get their ball put out very well done. The defending there. Uh, Gates had moving attack, uh, defense into attack very quickly. And yeah, but it's, no, it's Elliot Forbes, I meant to say. <laughs> Not in the end. Uh, yeah, that ball through, you know, in the channels is, is really working well for Gateshead now. Just trying to get the, the wide men and the two attacking midfielders in behind. Um, Hartlepool, though, at the moment, reading it pretty well. I've been impressed with the uh, centre-back so far. They have been reading the balls into the box superbly well. But this one comes in there and you see it's a... Hopeful. Yeah. And now Hartlepool on the attack. They've got men forward. The tackle from... Whelan didn't do enough, and on this far side, Otteru's on his own, and also Desiru in the middle. Can they get there? Oh, Gator do very well to oh, okay. marshal it back in there. Kent Richardson and Gator pass it out from the back, and now Story lays it off. And they can, is that a foul? Referee says yes, it is, and um, hard to tell from our vantage point there if it was or it wasn't, but it's been given, and Gator have took it quickly and played across the defence to Kempton Richardson brings the ball forward Evans back to Richardson sees the oh, nearly seen the run of Evans there he was away wasn't he ball goes out to the right hand side with Story played through the centre to Dejon Brown holds it up well but good defending taken away from him but his ball forward wasn't very good at all and neither was that one a little bit scrappy at the moment there and a couple of exchanges from both sides but Robbie Tinkler can pick the ball up inside his own half and give it to Richardson on the halfway line. Ball across the story. Out to Hannant. Evans. Ball nearly didn't reach its destination. Made life a little bit harder than what it needed to be there for Gated. But they still got the ball. Ball played forward for Whelan. Can he get down to the dead ball line? Pulls it back across. Oh, and it oh. goes between Adam and Dejon Brown, but the ball's been picked up by Booty. No, oh. lovely stuff from Booty, oh, but the defender did very well to read that and pick it up. And now Hartlepool can try and break here. Yeah, really well, well really well read from uh, Honorisa there. Um, I just think here, I'm just going to come to the ball a bit quicker. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, really well read from the Fools defender. Well, good ball. Quite a ball. Trying to play a oh, poor ball there in midfield, and Gator can try and get on the attack here as Whelan runs into space, needs targets in the box. Brown's there, so is Evans, but the ball goes back down the line, and Gator can play it forward again. Now Story gets the ball, good footwork, gets it out to Hannant. Han oh, sorry, it's Whelan. Whelan, can he get the cross in? Deflected out for a throw on the far side. Yeah, Louis Story just committing a defender there. Good to see uh, from a Gator point of view. Um, you know, coming out of that back line and, and really offering another another asset going forwards. Um, but again, Pools staying disciplined. At the so we're seeing Whelan get into those spots where you'd think the wing back was going to be running on to. He's, he's diving, you know, on the underlap there. It's uh, I think they're trying to play games with the Hartlepool defence at the moment. Who's making the runs? Well, Rob Elliott spoke about him being potentially number ten, and that's kind of the role that he's playing. Trying to get open support. Long throw from Regan Booty up towards Story. Bounces down. Falls to Adam on the edge of the area. Free kick being given. Or a shirt pull, I think it was. In a six-yard box, and it's a free kick. 
temperature has dipped. <laughs> it certainly has. So once again, a big thank you to everyone joining us on National League TV and, of course, our audio stream on the Heat Army podcast. Join us on Thursday night, 8 p.m. for our next live show. And hit the subscribe button as well, if you would be so inclined to do so. But Jameson with the free kick. Ball well held up by Dizawari. Ball over the top from Hartlepool. Greer trying to get there and Story hooks the ball up, manages to chest it down and pings the ball over the top. Now Dijon Brown's in a foot race with Waterfall. He's going to get there with lots of time and Jameson can clear it. But uh, Kent Richardson nods the ball looking for Kane Adam but wasn't going directly to him and Hartlepool can get themselves up as a ah, well done. Crawford tried to do a little... It's give the wrong ball, you know. Yeah. I think he's been told that by Cotton Man as well. <laughs> The ball was in the midfield of Francis. Crawford was trying a bit of nice uh, footwork there. Just didn't come off for him. Into the 36th minute here. If you're just joining us, of course, it's 1-1. One, one. Hartlepool going in front through Joe Gray. Gated pulling one back from the penalty spot with Luke Hannington. Luke Hannington's the man on the ball now. Drives forward if the ball's still going. Cuts inside. Goes for a shot himself. Then the arms of... Well, in the chest as Jameson went down, collects it, and not really troubling the goalkeeper at all there. Yeah, pretty comfortable for Jameson. Um, but a uh, nice sign of intent from, from Luke Cannon. Yep. Um, you mentioned about them playing on different wings, him and Kane Adam. Uh, he's got that option to cut inside and try and hit one, and uh, just didn't maybe make the contact that he would have wanted. Jameson with a long kick there. Gets a pick it up in midfield. Kenton Richardson. There's an inside to Booty. Back to Richardson. Hartlepool just trying to up the tempo here off the ball. But Gates had fine space on the far side with Richardson. Ball over the top looking for the run of nobody because there wasn't anybody there, but the ball nodded. Jameson has to be quick to get that on the edge of his area. But, uh, yeah, they need to be a bit more switched on the forward line there, making runs. Ball over the top. Stories there to nod it down to Francis. Back to Story. And in turn, all the way back to Harness. Yeah. That rain seems to have stopped now. Just a, maybe a fine drizzle still there, but it's not affecting the surface at all. There's lots of players on the run here going through, but it goes out to the right hand side. Gator have committed men forward. In comes the cross. It's going to go through and it's been cleared. Francis gets the ball, gets it to wheel in the edge of the area. Can he do something with it? Lays it off. Francis, right hand side of the box. Out. Talent. <laughs> Oh, it's here, there, and everywhere. But oh, the ball no. forward from Story to Francis, just way too much on it. Yeah. And uh, really patient, really patient play from Gateshead. Um, I think there's a little bit complaining from, uh, I think it's David Ferguson, left hand side for uh, for Hartlepool. Maybe think he's not getting protection from his midfield. Um, it's been, as you said, that, that run on the underlap from Callum Wigland's causing real issues. Ball played inside blindly there by Hartlepool and Evans comes back to mop up. Gives it to Richardson from Tinkler. Switched. And yeah, Hannant and Adam have switched flanks. So Adam on the more familiar right flank than what we've seen since his arrival from Welling in January. Hannant back on the left. Richardson plays it inside. It is going to fall to Evans. Evans, oh, just... Didn't get full control of it, and Hartlepool foot disrupted. Waterfall plays it out, gets it back. Good pressure. It's get it battling Coward to win there. the ball back, and now Featherston can just ping the ball over to the far side. And there's going to be Parks. Got themselves out of a little hole there. Pulls done well. Yeah, nice bit of passing, nice movement to pull away as well into the space, but. On a receipt, plays it across. It isn't Featherston that gets it across there. 39 minutes gone. 1-1. One, one. Ball played down the line. There wasn't a runner. And Gateshead can see that all the way back to Harness. Good line held by Gateshead there. Just, again, mention the word discipline again. But they have stayed disciplined there and let Pools just have possession. Then would have caught them offside, I think. Tinkler in the middle. Gets it out to Story. Adam, first touch on the right-hand side. 
We know he can try and skip past a man, but he's trying to do it now. Good Ferguson channel. does very well on the far side, keeps the ball in as well. And plays it inside. Featherston looks to play the ball across to Honorisi. It's just caught out a little bit of shape here. It's got Duru in front of him here. Goes into Crawford. Featherston a mile offside if he goes near that. There you go. <laughs> For a second, I thought the, the linesman wasn't going to do anything there. Oh, it's beyond me why they don't just put the flag off. It's pretty obvious he's got 10 yards offside. Yeah. Well, what's the use in common sense, Mark? <laughs> there's Tinkler. I get it when there's, you know, VAR at the, at the top level because you need to make rounds for that, but there's only two there. Tinkler has it in the centre. Evans drops to be the man, gives it back to Tinkler. Richardson has space to run into. Hannant. Evans plays oh, a bit right. of a blind ball there, but you could see the idea, but Booty was not on his toes expecting that. I think there was a little bit too much on the pass anyway. But we've got a best part of four minutes remaining here of normal time in the first half. Entertaining first half so far. As Otteru upended in front of the gated dugout there by Hannant. And this is another opportunity for the big men to go up for Hartlepool here. That's the added advantage of having a bit of height in your side, Mark, in situations like this. It is, and gets at home really high line as well, so watch the way it runs. Featherson puts it in. It's towards the edge of the box on the far side. Been cleared That's and gated break. now can break as Adam brings the ball forward. Hartlepool have got numbers back. Whelan. Oh, oh, does some beautiful footwork and he's going to put it back out to Adam here. Oh, is he? he hasn't he still got it himself? He's going to keep going. Wheeling now, Adam has the ball. Francis. People see him shoot and he does. And uh, well, I thought the ball back out to Adam might have been the one and build again, but I, I'm not the one out there. I haven't got the, I haven't got the boots. <laughs> to be honest, I think if I was Kane Adam, I've had three tools to find his backtrack and I would have just went at them. Um, from a Gator point of view, a good sign to see Craig Ollie back on Saturday. Yeah, he's just warming up down just the touchline. Warming up in the air. Uh, um, and Joe Grayson as well, he's been a, a shrewd signing. He certainly has. An under the radar signing, really. Jameson of a powerful kick there, and Gator pick it up in midfield, though. Ball forward. Oh, it's a deflected off a. Hartlepool player and Hartlepool can play the ball forward here. There's a runner oh, going to go through up. and Harness has to come to the edge of his area and just stops. Uses his elbows as brakes there on the edge of his box. Distributes well. it quickly though. His starting position was excellent there by the way. Well, Hannon just having to hold his run there. The ball wasn't forthcoming. Booty in the centre. Picks a ball across to the far side. Ferguson's there to read it, but it's going to fall to a gate to church and Story can bring the ball forward. Adam's still out on the right-hand side. It comes in out to Adam now from Francis. Back to Francis. And gets it. Happy to build. Everyone inside the Hartlepool half-bar harness. Hannant, left-hand side. Can he open something up? Whelan with a nice run to show from the back of the defence. Gives the ball to Richardson. It's all in the final third here for Gateshead. Whelan, nice bit of footwork to guide the ball to Richardson. Now Booty, Gateshead passing the ball for fun at the moment, but can they make it work? And the ball is going to go out for a Gateshead throw off waterfall. And um, I got a bit frustrated there. Yeah, again, just the Hollypool sat in neatly and uh, snuffed out anything from Gateshead. Well, Booty with yet another long throw here. Last minute and a half. But he aims it towards Story once again. Uh, up in the air, there's an aerial battle. Jameson comes out and Good collects. Check. Really commanded. And we are into that final minute now. Fourth official goes for his board. We'll let you know when we see. We have had an occasion here when the fourth official showed the three sides of an empty ground and not anyone in the stand what the 
added on time was. Hopefully, we, we see tonight as the ball goes all the way through harness. Rolled out to Francis. Tinkler. Story can carry it over the halfway line on the right hand side. It's got space to run into. Plays the ball through to Whelan. He's, and the ball goes out for a corner on the far side. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of a problem to solve on that left-hand side for uh, for Kevin Phillips. Um, uh, he's, Ferguson he's, he's, go, he's ghosting in there too easily for uh, Ferguson's liking, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, I, I think Ferguson's having a few words, you know, because he's getting... Basically, it's 2v1 every time, and, and he doesn't know whether to stick a twist. Well, it is going to be two minutes added on here, and we are into that now. We have a corner on the far side. Francis, it's a good delivery. Can oh, story gets ahead on it. Couldn't direct the goal words over it went, and it's a goal kick to Hartlepool United. Yeah, I think he knows he maybe should have done a little bit better there. Certainly had more time than he thought he had. I believe there is a minimum of two minutes additional time. Basically, been half two, two halves, hasn't it? I think Cools were probably the better side for the first half. They and... definitely started on the front foot, didn't yeah. they? And then Gates sort of got into their passing game as as we knew the word. Um, but it's the how much can they carve out and make Jameson work? Well, we're nearly a minute into the added on time here as Desuari holds the ball up. Very awkward, but he loses the ball. And Dejon Brown now drives forward of the ball. He's still going. He's got Wheeler on his right hand side, who he gives it to. And the ball wasn't the greatest, but he did a lot of the hard work there. And he had the defenders backpedaling. Did all the hard work, Dave. <laughs> it's just the final product there. Well, okay, Gator, can they carve out one more chance before the end of the half here? Hannon, left hand side. Booty busts are good to oh, show. I'll tell you what. Richardson. Plays it across to Adam. That's a good ball. Can Adam open up against Ferguson here? He's got the ball at his feet. Cuts inside with it. Still going. Going to turn. Gives it back to Story. Story plays the ball to Whelan. Down at the dead ball line. Pulls it back across. The, oh, and headed away by Honorisi. But Hannon can get there. Well, Hannon tried to... Well, he won a free kick. Um... I think he's feeling that he got caught on the back of the thigh there. Well, Dave, I can comfortably say from our vantage here that someone didn't agree with him. That was Kevin Phillips because he's just throwing his hands right up in the air. Yeah. Um, um, it was an interesting. I don't know if he's I, just I, caught him on the heel. He must have caught him on the calf. I said the thigh there before. So, sorry, the foot wasn't that high. But it, it must have just been in the back of the calf um, or the, the ankle, as you say. But um, it, in real time, I, I didn't think it was a foul. Um, but the reaction <laughs> said otherwise from Hannant. I think, uh, yeah, he's he's, he's, I he's feeling that one, isn't he, at the moment? I think Kevin Phillips will be too happy if this goes, goes in. Well, Francis, surely the last kick of the first half. Has the ball nodded clear? Can get to pick up the loose ball. Hasn't been cleared yet by Hartlepool. Two players going up for it. Headed clear now. And there is the half-time whistle. It ends level after 45 minutes. Hartlepool taking the lead through Joe Gray. And Gates said pulling one back from the penalty spot. But as Mark, my co-commentator said... It's been a first half of two halves. Uh, Hartlepool started much better, but you'd have to see Gates had got into their into their uh, swing of things and were dictating for a while. Yeah, I just think Fools just settled quicker. Simple as that. And I think the goal from a Gator point of view is very disappointing. And great finish from Joe Gray, taking absolutely nothing away from him. But I think when Gator go back and review that goal, they'll see defensively it wasn't what it should be. There wasn't enough pressure put on the ball. When the loose ball came back out, there wasn't enough reaction there. And I think maybe Harness may well look at himself and, and beat him from an arrow angle but you're right yeah Gates had improved um, as the half wore on well there's a little bit of afters there as uh, Ferguson trying to have words with Kane add on there off the, as they go down the tunnel but uh, that's it we are going to have a little break here we're going to turn our mates off and have a chance to warm up slightly uh, thank you for joining us in the first half we'll be back in about 10 minutes uh, before the um, well, five minutes before we come back on uh, onto the pitch so uh, don't go anywhere make yourself a cup of tea have a toilet break and we'll be back with this exciting game in the second half
Well, we're back with you here after our half-time break at Gateshead International Stadium. Of course, if you are just joining us here and wondering what the score is, it's Gateshead 1, Hartlepool 1. Do you agree with the goal in the early stages on a counter-attack and Gateshead equalising from the penalty spot with Luke Hannant? And um, we'll just give a quick update of what the uh, scores are around the National League. Of course, there's only um, three fixtures tonight, I believe. And I'll go through them scores once I get them on my screen. Apologies, I thought that happened quicker. Um, I can tell you that um, South End are winning 2 0 away to uh, Solihull Moors, and Altrincham are drawing 1 all. I think it's with Wheelstone at the moment. I'm just going to get that up, but it, as I've looked to sign for it, it helps if you're on the right day, David. So Altrincham 1, Wheelstone 1, Gated 1, Hartlepool 1, of course, and Solihull Moors 0. South End 2 and um, well if uh, Gator w- want to get uh, higher up the league there's an opportunity there Mark yeah I mean at the minute they can't really think about that it's just about winning the game of football simple um, but there is an opportunity here you can't deny that um, and you look at the job being done but down at South End by the way everything they've been through all the troubles the fact that they've got such a limited squad and the fact that they're, they're competing yeah. At this level, just a fantastic. I mean, they were great when they came here, weren't they? The one-one, and they're probably probably one of the better sides I've seen come to the international stadium. But at the moment, Gates have come back out here for the second half, and um, it looks unchanged at the moment because all the substitutes are still passing the ball around on the pitch at the moment. <laughs> as we await Hartlepool to come back out there, one of the ball boys doesn't. We've got a, a hand slap off uh, Luke Hannon there, and uh, out come the remainder of the Gated side. We await Hartlepool to come. But Mark, an entertaining first half, and if we have anything close to that in the second, it uh, be a good all-round game. Yeah, I thought it was a great 45 minutes. Um, you know, we've said many times that it was pools that started better. They had lively, there was energy, there was athleticism across the side. Um, but I do think defensively, you know, there is a lot of experience in there. But I think because of the mobility of the That's likes the of uh, Dijon you. Brown, uh, Kane Adam, maybe you can try and get at them a bit, but I also, by the same token, I think when you look at it, the likes of Joe Gray, I mean, you saw his pace and his power to get him behind, he's a real threat as well. And so. then, then you look at the, the set piece threat yeah, as well, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's but Hartlepool all back out onto the pitch. What I would say, Dave, is I saw Hartlepool in the season uh, under John Askey, and I, I do think that Phillips is starting to bring an improvement out of them. Um, Yes, he'd not be happy with the second half of the first half, but I do think there's there's a clear sign that there's a plan there. Um, it, it's really this is a really threatening forward line with Disa Rovo and uh, and Joe Gray. A little bit of everything there, isn't there? There's pace and power. Uh, there's the height of uh, Disa Rovo, and uh, again, you saw what Gray's all about. So yeah, yeah Gates are going to have to be at the best. They're going to get something, but Hartlepool have got to be disciplined second half as well, just as they were for large portions of the first. Well, we're about to get underway. Gated shooting towards the Finland end and Hartlepool shooting towards the River Tyne here in the second half. Booty stands over the ball and we just wait the referee's whistle to get us underway for the second half. And there we go. Francis pings the ball out to this right-hand side, but unless Luke Hannant <laughs> has legs about 10 foot long, he's not going to get to that one. But uh, Switched again, by the way. Yeah, Hannon back to the right hand side of the uh say the wing back rule as Gated win the ball. Story pings the ball over the top, but we headed clear by Hartlepool. Ball goes out off Story's head, throw in to Hartlepool here. Lightman didn't have a clue that was, did he? No, but it is pretty slow. <laughs> Ferguson takes his throw, plays it inside. Dummy from Dizawaru there. Gray didn't read it. Good idea, though. Because Gray definitely has the pace to latch onto one of those. I think he's slightly harsh on uh, Gray there, by the way, because that ball, he wasn't that far behind him. Yeah. And it's been pinged in. Booty gives it to Richardson. Tinkler in the centre circle. Whelan guides it out to Hannant. Hannant plays it inside. Evans, lovely back to Hannant. Fast pass, passing from Gateshead. Francis puts it out now to Evans. Right hand side of the box, plays it in. Whelan holds it up, rolls it back. Tried to be a little bit too cute there, Gateshead, and 
Hartlepool well didn't hold up the ball there and there was an elbow from Tizawaro it's been sent to play on ball into the centre Evans on the edge of the area shoots it in there we go he picked up the loose ball in the box and he's guided it home and Hartlepool they'll be kicking themselves there because that was a bit sloppy it was really poor defensively really poor uh, you know someone's got to take a man you've got to clear the ball it's a half-eight clearance it's what I will say from Kieran so it's a brilliant first touch to set up the shot and it's meant that he hasn't had to, to take a step back to get it away that his momentum can go into the ball I don't think Jameson can do anything about that it's a yeah. really good strike in that far corner uh, and a really really good start the second half it's exactly what Gateshead needed um, so the close to react now yeah I initially said there in the build up that he was on the edge of the box when he got the ball but um, he was uh, five yards in and buried it at home but uh, a great start from Gateshead in the second half and the Welsh Messi Kieran Kieran Evans finds the goal again Gateshead started the quicker in the second half and I'm sure that will spark Hartlepool right into life. Not that they were uh, sluggish before that. But Gator trying to win the ball back in midfield. Now, Evans, a little flick to Whelan. Whelan has Hannans here on the right-hand side. And Gator trying to move the ball fast. Goes back along the defence all the way to Richardson on the left-hand side. Adam. Quickly closed down, plays it inside to Francis. Francis will loft it through there, looking for the run of a forward player, but Gateshead. I have to see the ball back to Harness there. Well, 48 minutes gone, Gateshead 2, Hartlepool United 1. And from a Gator perspective, just the start they wanted. Yeah, I mean... It's probably not that stage yet, but it will bring Hartlepool out. You know, they will have to come and, and try and force the game. Not As I say, not yet. They'll try and stay disciplined for the time being and, and mm -hmm. just keep the game at where it is. But at some point now, they've got to come out. They've got to have a go at Gateshead. Booty carries the ball forward. Left-hand say puts it out to the left-hand touchline where Adam tries to cut in. Wins the ball back. Or just to a foul there. And... Uh, I've seen big plumes of smoke yeah, behind us. I don't know if someone's gonna... vaping or something. No, but, uh... I, think, I think that will be a small problem. Yeah. Which yeah. I imagine will be a problem because uh, you can get fined for that now, can't you? Yes, you can. A bit of stupidity from younger fans there. Jameson with the free kick. His kicking's been impeccable tonight. Honorisi sees it out. Throwing on the far side to Hartlepool. Lofted throw up. Gator pick it up in midfield. Francis. There's it to Hannant. Hannant touches it back to Story. And now Francis has acres of space in the middle to pick out a pass. Gets it to Booty on the left-hand side. Plays it into the middle. Evans just couldn't get onto that one. And Hartlepool can try and half something out on the right hand He's side as well, Desiru yeah. does well gets to win the ball back though but it lands back to Desiru nice shows good feet plays the ball through and now Gray is on the break and he well, I don't know if he slid tackle himself there but uh, <laughs> he lost his button and Gates had managed to just calmly well, there's pass a threat, out of trouble you know there's a threat though isn't it from from Hartlepool Joe Gray getting them behind fortunately there Gateshead because uh, I can only hazard a guess sorry he lost his foot and then the studs just slipped away from him but Gateshead need to be stayed switched on they win the ball back but it's a little bit of sloppy passing very well also Kane Adam there just expecting the ball to come to him and I guess he'll be getting to tell him to I think he already has I think Regan Booty's just told him that it's got to be better well Francis in the centre circle just on the halfway line I'm surprised that Hartlepool have given Ed Francis so much time in midfield because you know he's going to dictate the game no. Oh, and poor passing there from Kent Richardson as Hartlepool break now through the centre as Kent Richardson. Well, the referee sees play on. He hasn't pulled it back. He has pulled it back now because Kent Richardson was all over the back. That, that'll be a book as well. Yeah, it's going to be a yellow card for his foul on Crawf uh, Crawford, I think it was. Or was it Gray? But yeah, um, I see. Had to disrupt there. Just took a yellow card for the team there, I think. 
it, again, it's come from sloppiness, hasn't it? And that's, yep. that's something that Rob Elliott and Nicole Magny and Luke Story is obviously on the field. We'll want to uh, we'll want to sharpen up because just allowing tools to have a little bit of a you know a, a, a chink of light here really. Well, this one's very central, and the players are grouped central as well for this free kick. In it comes. It's going to go towards Waterfall there and bounces all the way through. Waterfall keeps it in, and good play there from Hannant. And uh, the little man <laughs> gives a little shoulder barge to Waterfall there and show him that he's there. Good spirited. They're enjoying their tussle out there this afternoon, or this evening, should I say. It's Ferguson. Plays across. it back to Featherston. We know we can put a good goal ball in. That one too close to the goal. Do you know what? It's a really good ball in, though, because of any little touch on that and uh, and Harness is in, in trouble. I think that's a great ball. Just nobody has, has kind of anticipated it. No. Coming now, down. Francis. You see, they are allowing him a lot of time and space, aren't they? Is your headphone working itself there, is it? No, 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 oh. no, 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 no. It's just, like I say, I, I can't understand why you're giving that Francis so much time when he's the one that makes Gateshead tick from a you know a deeper position. Well, Louis Story brings the ball forward, still going, lays it out to Hannon on the right hand side, tries to cut in, gets it back from Whelan, pulls the cross in. Great ball. There's the oh, ball! That is unbelievable. oh, he had the space, he had the time, but the link up play on the right hand side was absolutely fantastic, and it carved Hartlepool open. Perfectly, absolutely sensational play down this right hand side. We identified it there first half as an issue for Hartlepool on that left hand side where Ferguson's getting getting teamed up on the play around it there. It's a wonderful cross in from Hannon and it's a brilliant header from Dijon Brown, continuing his form. I looked at the team sheet before the game. I'm surprised that he started ahead of Denanga, but he's proven his worth again. What a what a talent this young kid is. Well, Gates said three, Hartlepool United one. And we're only 54 minutes into the second half. Again, it's down to close to react, you know. They, they need a reaction here. And this is where they need the experienced players to really front up and, and get them back into this game. Well, uh, we, we know Hartlepool can be disciplined. And, of course, that was a, a, a good pass in this play from Gateshead to create that opportunity. But they're going to have to try and take a few more risks now to get back into this game. Well, they will, and, I, and I think Kevin Phillips will be annoyed with how that's come about, by the way, because it's such a... It's a, it's a great goal from the Gates, that's point of view. But it's also, it's, it's pretty simple. Well, ball over the top, looking for the run of Dizawari. Tink like a nod it down and Gates said, pass it around as Richardson puts it up towards Dejan Brown. Tink there to clear it again when he finds a Hartlepool player and Honorisi on the far side. As Gates had fans in fine voice at the moment. Hartlepool fans shell shocked on the far side. They want to see something from their team, and passing like that oh. won't impress them much. There's what's been kept in by Jameson there. But Featherston, he was expecting a bit of a better ball there, I think. Ball pinged up towards the gate of defence as Hannant under pressure plays it back to Harness. Harness. Here's the ball and turn up towards Dijon Brown. Oh, Whelan couldn't get through, oh, but right. Evans does very well to win it back and puts it out to Kenton Richardson on the far side. Really grown into the game, Evans, hasn't he? I thought he was just uh, game sort of happened around him in the first half, but he's uh, sorry for the first half of the first half. He certainly was. Well, I thought he might, he might not have came back out for the second half because he took quite a knock, but a ball over the top looking for the run of Kane Adam. Headed clear. Booty will get in front of Crawford. There's it back to Richardson. Not the best pass from Evans there as Francis nearly intercepts, but Featherston does well. Great marshes a bit back. Great intensity from Gator, though that kind of wasn't the levels you would expect first half, but they really upped it uh, after half time. Well, Gator showing, again? you see, the, that pressure to try and stop Hartlepool from getting forward, and they pick up the ball on the far side through that pressure. Kane Adam cuts inside with the ball, gives it to Evans. He's going to line up for his shot, goes for it, and well, he couldn't get it to Dick. And uh, he could have taken another couple of touches, you know. But uh, yeah, Kane Evans loves getting in those little pockets in between the midfield and forwards. And uh, again, Hartlepool setting off just haven't quite picked up on that at the moment. Hartlepool looking to try and get themselves back into the game, still plenty of time to do it. With 35 minutes remain, well, the game's not far from over. 
you know, there's still one goal back here and, and Hartlepool are right back in it. Ferguson has to play it back. As Parks plays it across. Onorisi plays the ball over the top, looking for the run of Crawford. Crawford nods it on there on the far side, Otteru. Plays it back. Got to stop the cross. Plays it into the centre. Hangy man. Plays it back. It's a better play from Hartlepool. More composed. Out to Ferguson here on the left-hand side. Who goes up against Hannon. Puts a cross in there. It was a dangerous one. Put behind for a corner. corner. No, yeah. it was Ed Francis, I think. He's just, just nicked the ball from yeah. well for there. This is again, Dave, the set pieces we spoke about it. Uh huh. Oh, there is going to be a substitution. It is going to be Callum Cook is going to come on for Hartlepool. I didn't see the number there because it quickly turned. It's Adura. Adura is coming off. Refreshing to see a substitute actually sprinting to get off the pitch. <laughs> well, he's got no choice. <laughs> well, we're going to see. Is, this is going to go right on top of it. It's a short corner, corner here. It's been taken. Referee wasn't happy with that from Featherston. Just as well from get up on you. Yeah, the <laughs> substitution for Hartlepool United. Ruben Pitch, Quacker Abura, being replaced by number 10, Callum Cook. In comes the corner from Featherston. It's deep headed in from Dejon Brown, picked up by Callum Cook. Out back to Featherston. He's got way too much time and space. Can he get the delivery in? Cuts inside of it, lays it forward, comes back to Featherston edge of the box, out to Ferguson, he crosses it in, Dijon Brown there, back on defensive duties, Story heads are clear, now booted clear by Evans, and now he'll be trying to, oh, well, he was hoping to get there, but oh, Booty brings the ball down well, can he get in front of the man, he can, and gets it on the attack, plays it into the centre, oh, Keen ball. Adam, can he get in front of his man? Brilliant tackle, Great. brilliant tackle. Let's see, I think there's Parks there that got there, and um, I think he's caught Adam in the, yeah, after the tackle. Yeah, just an unfortunate one, but great defending, but great movement from Gated on the attack. Yeah, I think he's just caught him on the on the follow through. It's a great tackle, by the way, I say from yeah. Parks. Done brilliantly to get back in, but I love the early ball from Regan Booty. It's such a good ball in behind, caused threat straight away. The defender committed too early on the slide and tackled, didn't he? And just, he, did, uh, he probably had to. Yeah. He had to, but uh, yeah, a good break in. Uh, that was an interesting period of the game there. Well, Evans is going to take this corner on the far side. Got two v one off the it quick, which they do. Francis gives it back to Evans. Evans back to Francis down to the dead ball lane. Pulls it back across into the centre. Gets a player couldn't get. Yeah, Booty gets a shot off. Evans ball one. Regan Booty slots it home in amongst the crowd and Gated. They're starting to go through the gears here. Unbelievable uh, first touch again. As I mentioned it with the uh, the Evans goal. It's a great first touch from Regan Booty because that ball's flown at him. It's the only way he can score. Drive it low, get it through the legs. Jameson inside in the far corner. Brilliant, brilliant finish. Wow. Yeah, long way back from Hartlepool now. You feel sorry for the fans over there. You know, there's. Oh, you can start to see one or two yeah. starting to make the way towards the exit. Kevin Phillips will be wanting to stop the rot, as it were, and, and get some shape and composure back because if it carries on like this with the amount of time left, it. it I'd hate to see it, but it's a good score. Yeah, I mean, you know, Gates had been unbelievable since half time. And you just look at, at Pools again, you look at the, you know, your Featherstones and Fergusons, you want them to, to really get among the younger lads in the squad and, and get things moving here because you don't want to let this Gateshead side run riot because yep. if they do, they really, really will. Well, this is where Hartlepool will need Nicky Featherston, Ferguson, Dizawaru, the players with the experience to try and grab the game by the scruff of the neck and a ball over the top looking for Dijon Brown gets a drop coming forward at will he's on the right hand side cuts in with it oh just took it a little bit too far and Ferguson caught as he's rolling round but the ball goes out for a has he give the free kick yes he has given the free yeah, kick it was, right, it, was, right, it, was right, a, it was a free kick yeah did catch him yeah just wide open again at the back there fools well, he Ferguson hurt himself. He'll mark, he'll yeah, he did, it, it did look like it was a, a heavy collision. That it's probably just caught him on the top of the foot. Well, this is up there battling for it, but Gated win the ball through Brown, Francis out to Richardson, and this is where Hartlepool don't need heads to drop here. There's an overlap. 
ball out here to Hannon. He's in thing. loads really. of space. Can he get the ball in? Dijon Brown's asking for it. In it comes. Dijon Brown. Oh, good defending. And uh, I think Dijon Brown was just put off enough to put it past the post. Yeah, another wonderful ball in from Luke Hannon. Um, again, since half time, he's probably epitomised Gateshead. You know, the energy and the quality in the final third. Um, Brown will probably think, you know, the mood that he's in, the, the, the form that he's in, he should have probably done a little bit better with that. Well, <laughs> I'm sure Marcus Denanga's sitting on the bench, <laughs> licking his lips, thinking, can I get in amongst this? Um, of course, he's got 19 league goals this season. I think it's 25 or 26 with the cup goals. Um, he'll be wanting to get amongst it, but there's a lot of games coming up at the moment, a lot of squad management to be had. But, kids that have had leads slip away. <laughs> So it's never over till it's over. As Callum Cook, left hand side, just calmly plays it down the line to Featherston. Featherston back to Parks. Poor ball to Featherston. We saw Featherston short there and a throw integrated on the halfway line. And yeah, there's just a little bit of the composure's left the Hartlepool at the moment. Yeah, they have just everything they did well in the first first part of the first half. They haven't done second half. You know, the discipline's just gone defensively. The the organisation seems to have gone a little bit, and they've just allowed Gateshead to get in behind far far too easily. There was just no space in behind you. Richardson the first. tries to get the ball up to Booty. The ball rolls off a Hartlepool player, and that's just summed up their look in the last uh, thirty seconds. You know, there was no space in behind in the first half at times for Gateshead. Yeah. And, they're just wide open at the moment. I mentioned to you off the air at half time that if Gates had got the second goal, Pools would have to come out and that opened up space. I didn't think it'd be this much. Yeah, as um still I think Hartlepool will be a threat if they can get themselves, you know, back on the ball. I mean you look at the bench now and you know, there's not a tremendous amount there. Um whereas Gates had, I mean, there's an argument to say all four, all five of their subs could have started this game. Yes. Um uh, or the Free kick on the far side, an opportunity for Gator to whip one in from about 25 yards out, right on the touchline on the far side. Well, Greg Ollie warming up down the line there. It'd be lovely to see the captain back on home turf. First time since uh it was games against South End. Uh, South End, yes. November, I think it was. It was, yeah, late November. Evans. Stands over it, whips it in. The story coming in, it's been headed clear, and Hartlepool get there to clear the ball. Callum Cook pings it over the top end, looking great for Gray, ball. and Gray can bring it down. Gates to need to get back in numbers, and Evans is there to try and disrupt, but Gray holds up the ball well, goes for his shot, and that sparks just frustration from Gray. Uh, could have had a laid off. I mean, Kevin Phillips applauded it because it was an intent. Of run forward with the ball, but major major credit to Kieran Evans, by the way, because yeah. he sprinted back there to put uh, to put Gray under pressure. I think Gray has been the, the real high point for Pools tonight. I think he's looked a threat every time he's got in. Um, been very impressed with him, and uh, it's always nice to see a player coming through the ranks at any club, especially in the northeast. And Hartlepool have a great history of it with players in the past, but at the moment, Gateshead playing the ball out to Booty, back to Richardson. Francis brings the ball out here to Hannon, who was in runner. acres it's of space inside to Evans. Evans takes his first touch, goes for the shot. Good defending, gets in front. Parks was there, threw his body in the way behind for a corner. But again, it's just too easy. That, you know, Hannon's got all the time in the world to take a touch, play the pass. No one's really trapped uh, Kieran Evans. I think he could have maybe held it, even, you know, because Parks has committed early to block the shot, rightly so. Could have just cut inside, and I think he's in. Well, Francis comes over to take this corner here. I think we have got a little bit of movement on the bench. I think we are going to see uh, a substitution from Gateshead, but not before this corner. It's taken short to Whelan. Whelan's got space, whips one in, headed clear from the near post. Evans on the edge. Jericho's for his audacious one over the bar. Elliot Falls of Piders, unbelievable. <laughs> For all uh, listeners and viewers, obviously you wouldn't have seen Mark getting a handshake from former players, but and then one just absolutely pied him off. 
Free kick to Hartlepool, though, by the way. I'll remember that next time I cover a Spartans game. <laughs> well, the man, Greg Ollie, is going to come on to a fantastic reception. But just as well as the reception, Kieran Evans will get. Played a massive part in getting Gateshead in front here at Gated Stadium tonight. For the Welsh Messi, his family's coming up for the first home game on Good Friday. And they'll be hoping to see him in that kind of form. But Greg Ollie, the captain... He's back out there. And I think you're going to see Tom Allen soon as well, by the way. Just got a really, really long talking to from Carl Magne. Well, Tom Allen has had a blighted time with injury since he arrived from Newcastle United. Loan spells at Spennymoor that were hampered as well. But a player you did an interview with not so long ago, and he is a very driven young man, and maybe. Had to learn the life outside of the academy football and outside of the, the big I, I, game. I think that's the same with every young lad coming out in an academy. There's always a, a spell where you've got to adjust to, to, to a new club, to a new environment. You know, he's not, we all know what academy football is like these days. It's, you know, manicured pitches and it's all the, the sort of passing style of football. Ironically, they won't get to play, to be fair. <laughs> but it's uh, there's a bit more intent about Gateshead than in academy football. And Tom's a great lad. And, and I really hope it does work out from here at Gateshead. Um, he's certainly got the talent for it. Well, Ollie gets his first touch, gets it to Francis. Booty now, Ollie plays it through the <laughs> through the referee's legs. Out to Adam on the far side. Adam looks to Slip back. bring it back into Kent Richardson. Booty pulls off into space. Whelan, Booty back to Whelan. Booty will play it to Ollie. Ollie's got the chance now to give it to Story. Hannington Acres here, but through the middle, there's Whelan. Oh, just way too much on it. But I'll tell you what, if you had a got there, you fancied him to pull it back across. Well, I had images of that uh, goal against, was it Dagenham Redbridge, the 36 or whatever it was? It was uh, yeah. Similar, similar to that, the, the passing and movement. I mean, Greg Ollie's come in and looked like he's never been away. Great. Battling on the far side. Stuck at it, you know, Gray. He has. He, he, has, he, has he hasn't shirked away at all, no, has he? Not at all. And that's the sort of attitude pools need, um, whether it's just this game or you know, for the remainder of the season, whatever we've got left, six, seven games, I, I think he's been the, the real highlight on a, on a really disappointing night for the club. Ball over the top. There was Hannon just to marshal it back there to Harness, back to Hannon. At the moment, they're trying to close it down, Hartlepool, but leaving a lot of space in turn, and Gateshead can pass it with ease and get it across to the far side. Kane mm -hmm. Adam. This is inside. The Olays are coming and Greg Ollie's on the ball. He's going to, oh, lovely turn, but Desiraru come back. Oh, no, it wasn't Desiraru, oh, sorry. Wow. But the pass wasn't very good from Honorisi there. And now it's in the middle. Francis puts oh. it through. Dijon Brown. Oh, what a finish. There you go. 5 1. And Gateshead just pulled them apart with the passing. And Dijon Brown gets his second goal of the night. Stunning. Absolutely stuck that ball. To release Brown in on goal is absolutely unbelievable. Again, I'll say it, pools are chasing shadows at times. They've completely lost the discipline. But just absolutely brilliant football from Gateshead. Oh, I don't mean to you know, go on too much, but this is, as a Gateshead fan, this is something special, this team at the moment, and it's a joy to watch. I know there'll be Hartlepool fans not exactly enjoying what they're seeing, but um, at the moment, uh, Gator in Dreamland, 5-1 at the moment against Hartlepool. And lovely to see Greg Ollie in the build-up as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, you've got... Uh, you look ahead at what's coming in the next couple of weeks and you could be heading into a really special time for this football club. You know, Friday, Rochdale here, next Monday, at filed, but then obviously... All eyes turn towards the FA Trophy. Gates had hit moment, uh, getting momentum at just the right time. But um, just an unbelievable second off performance. One I didn't see coming. Again, I will say I feel sorry for the Pools fans because it's such a great, just a great club. The, the, the numbers that's turned up there. And as I say, there's, there is a good relationship between Gateshead and Hartlepool. Gateshead obviously always indebted for the help they gave us when the pitch was awful here at Gated Stadium. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's. One of those nights where it, it's lovely to be a Gated fan, but Hartlepool, they'll be, dare I say, looking at the next season and hoping to start on a brighter foot. A brighter note, should I say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just 
just unbelievable supporters and to, to see them being put through this and it's uh yeah it's, it's not nice for them at all and i think there's going to be another couple of subs from from both sides yeah it's, uh, at the Tom moment on, gates on. Are passing it around the back into the center with francis and gates will just pass it all the way around it's I think you're, you're probably looking at one of the best second half performances I've seen from a Gates outside in a long, long time. Well, a long time. As I say, I expected the second half to be a, a close affair like the first half. I was expecting there would be lots of chances for Hartlepool and scares for both goalkeepers. Um, it so hasn't worked out that way. It's just so much space there. Francis sees the run of Hannon Thierry's in acres of space. Too easy. Can he get a ball higher up the pitch? Gets it to Story. Story, Francis. Francis, Ollie, Story, Francis. It's very easy this for Gateshead as Whelan now. He looks up, he's got Hannant. Hannant puts it in, lofts it into the centre. It was taken away. Falls to Francis. It's going to go for a shot. Oh, is he? Oh, oh he chips it through Whelan. Oh, great oh, save. Oh. It's 6 wow. 1. Oh, <laughs> would you look at that? Absolutely dreamland for the Gateshead support. And Hartlepool just don't know where to look on the pitch. The, the death touch from Francis through to Whelan. The run from Whelan was perfectly timed. Jameson, you've got to feel sorry for. He was left left with nothing. I mean, not much he could do. Had to make himself big and it wasn't enough. That is unbelievable from Ed Francis again. The ball through to Whelan is it's phenomenal. And, and it's a great little finish, by the way, because he could have just blasted that. But he's just dinked it over Jameson. Stunning again. I keep saying it, but just stunning. Well, we're going to see Tom Allen come on, and we're also going to see um, Courtney Duffus. Uh, right? Courtney uh, Duffus coming on as well. Number four, well, the non-league Modric has done it again. And Kane Adam is coming off. Gets a fantastic round of applause from the Tainan Weir stand. And now Tom Allen comes on. Another set of fast legs as Honorisi makes way probably the last thing that yeah. Holly Buller want to face is the pace of, of Tom Allen well Courtney Duffus is on now oh, he isn't just yet sorry he is now 74 minutes gone Gateshead 6 Hartlepool United 1 and I, I read an interesting stat before the game. Hartlepool haven't won at Gateshead, uh, where it was Reg, Reg Parker here since 1954. So 70 years of uh, anguish on Tyneside. Ball forward, held up. Gateshead tried to win the ball back, but this gets it to Dufus, who goes down to win a free kick. Well, Featherston places the ball down. There's a player pulled off here. Ferguson to this left-hand side. Featherston saying no. We're going to put it into the mixer. In it comes. There's men coming round the back. It's a good ball. Hasn't been cleared by Gator just yet. Dijon Brown hooks it clear. Throw in on the far side. You take Dijon Brown off and bring Denanga on. Do you think you keep Denanga for for, Saturday, for Friday? Sorry. Well, I say the. It's a it's a lovely problem to have, Mark. I mean, we go back to this time last year, and Gateshead were not Fred Bear in the league, but oh, oh my oh. word, it goes from bad to worse. I don't think I've ever seen a player lose the ball behind his own head on a throw-in. Probably sums up the night. Well, ball put out to play onto the far side. Well, what we doing now? That's quarter of an hour, and you know, Gates, I can just see out time. There's no need for the urgency. There's no need for the. I know that the standards will be demanded of them to hit those levels and keep hitting them, but uh, we can just start thinking uh, about Friday. And of course, we, we looked elsewhere at half time. I don't know what the score is now. It's Solihull, but Gates would have a much better difference than Solihull Moors, and this score line goes a long way to add into that as well. It looks like Joe Grayson might be getting stripped to come on. It might be Kenton Richardson coming off. There's Hartlepool. Out of Parks. Out to Ferguson. Ferguson looks to want to run in the middle there. He does get it from Cook. But 
couldn't control it and gated now ball across to Kent Richardson there he's now as Tinkler just slows it down Harness Francis just takes <laughs> the space to turn now on the far side Allen gets his first touch been a great atmosphere hasn't it it really has oh it's warm and that is uh, actually script to come on About two assists on Saturday for Callum Whelan maybe Coming off. quite possibly but Harness is put across the far side Allen does keep it in oh, Ollie he hasn't has he not oh that's sorry didn't see the flag go up there. My excuse was the steward's jacket was the same colour as the flag as it went up. <laughs> well, I know I jokingly compare him to Luka Modric, but he puts in a fantastic shift, scores goals from midfield, creates them, and does all the donkey work in between. A real midfield general, and he gets a round of applause here from the Tainan Weir stand. Just a, a wonderful footballer, Callum Whelan. I, I always go back to when he signed, you know, and the, the stick that Gator got from all the fans for, for signing him. He's just been a wonderful signing and, and such a clever player. Um, I think Rob Elliott's right. I think he, he can become one of the best number 10s in the league. I think you've seen that today. Warman gets his first touch, lays it out. Now to Hannant. Francis in the centre. The ball does get to him there. Duffus was tried to get in front of him, but now Allen can play the ball forward. Comes back to him. Actually goes out. Taken. And gets it to Ollie. Back to Richardson. Robbie Tinkler. Gets the fans bringing out the old layers. Seventy-nine minutes gone. Gates at six. Hartlepool United one. As Allen opens up and drives with forward of the ball. He's got past three defenders. He's still going. Can he pull it back? Oh, Hartlepool just managed to see it out, and it's a corner. But wow, three defenders couldn't get near Tom Allen. Yeah, great save from Tom. You know, obviously he's had his, as he mentioned before, his injury issues. But that's exactly what you can get from Tom Allen. I know how highly Rob Elliott rates him. I really do. He always talks about his potential and trying to realise that here at Gator and sort of encapsulated that there well Greg Ollie back on the corners in comes his delivery oh it's been whipped through low and been kept in by Tinkler on the dead ball and put back along to Ollie Ollie lofts it in Denanga oh it's not Denanga it's Brown oh Booty comes in can he get it across oh, oh pass straight through all it needed was a touch off any leg and it was in the back of the net and Gates said so close to getting their seventh goal this evening. Yeah, just strength there from Booty, wasn't it? And determination, just wanted that ball a little bit more. Um, just, what, it's, what it's on his left, you think he's, he's going to score? You think he's going to score, but just probably too much on it. Well, Duffus goes up for the header, but Kent Richardson won it. Trying to pass it around the back now. Hartlepool as Parks under pressure has to play it back to Jameson. I mentioned the work rate still in, in from Gator, doesn't it? They're still. Well, Ollie picks up the ball in space, plays it all the way back to Kent Richardson, and Gator just dictate the pace of the game again. As now the ball comes across here to Hannon. How many times in the second half has he been in space? As Warman takes it down, tries to put it back into corner for us. Has he? Well, yeah, 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 he has. <laughs> No, so, no, he hasn't. Goal uh, kick. Well, I thought well, the linesman. The linesman gave a corner, but the referee's given the goal kick. Yeah. Obviously, they're still talking. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. there we go. But um, yeah, we've got best part of nine minutes remain here. And if you are just uh, joining us, where have you been? It's Gated six, Hartlepool United one, and Gated have been rampant in this second half. As does the worry wins the header, Gray. Across to the far side. Hanging man. Gray continued his Great run. Ball. He's being picked out. Kent Richardson there, though, just gets in front and 
Well, ball comes out for a goal kick. Gray can't believe it, but it did come off his shin. Again, I'll go back to, to praising Joe Gray. He's he's shown, you know that. He's that, shown drive, hasn't he? he hasn't, it's, it's never left. Uh, I one because I think it was Tom Crawford. <laughs> was it Crawford? Was it? <laughs> but again, I mean, yeah. another player that's shown, you know, the intensity that's been been slightly lacking from some of his teammates. That uh, to pressure Richardson even at six one down. There won't be a lot that Kevin Phillips will like about this performance, but uh, yeah, he'll be pleased with stuff like that. Well, Booty plays it out to Allen on the Booty's left hand a side. Bit, a bit deeper, hasn't he, Booty? Yeah, I think that's to allow a bit room for Ollie Warm higher up the pitch. Yeah. Warming. Yeah. There's Story receives the ball, gives it back to Tinkler. Tinkler, lovely turn and gives it to Story. Now, Hannant, he's got Warman on the inside. Ollie in the inside as well. Picks out Ollie. Ollie just dinks it back to Francis. And on the far side, Allen's in space. Have you seen? But it goes through the centre. Oh. And oh, it just runs away from Booty. All the way through to Jameson. I don't know if it was a poor first touch off. He's trying to play Greg Ollie in there. I'll let you decide that one. <laughs> just in the middle. <laughs> Somewhere in the middle. 83 minutes gone. Tinkler just lets that go behind him. All the way through to Harness. Rolled it out to Richardson. Booty. Hannon to acres of space here, there. But Booty now goes onto it, plays the ball through, comes off. The, the crossfield ball, you, you're right, Dave. Yeah. It's on every single time. And I think that's what Luke Hannon's saying. That, that switch is on every single time. Well, Ollie just gives it back to Tinkler. Harness. Okay, so just passing it around the back at the moment. Hornus gets another touch. Warman holds it up to Booty. Booty put, oh. uh, sorry, Jahan puts it inside, and oh, dear, Hartlepool sorry. just managed to get a foot on the ball and stop Gator from building. Jameson clears the ball up. Does Warwick flicks it through? Hornus quickly out his box to. Hoof that one clear on the far side as Allen tries to keep it in. Does he oh, manage well to do so as Brown sees it out, throw into Gated? They're doing the simple things well at the moment, Gated. I know that they can be afforded that with the score line and the opposition's heads have dropped somewhat, but they're just seeing it outright. Yeah, I mean <laughs> it's not really much else they can do, is there? Yeah. Just just gotta do the right things and avoid injuries and you know. <laughs> still look to impress the manager because there's going to be a lot of competition for places but I think it's a just just so comfortable ball on the right hand side here but you could have seen it but it was on his wrong foot but Hannant still sticking to this right hand touch line and so much space there again I think you're probably looking at about half of the the pools fans have stayed and massive credit to them because it takes a lot to watch your side subjected to this sort of performance and to, to fall this far behind. The fact they've stayed and, and, and watched until what looks like it's going to be the final whistle. Yeah, and the support's been phenomenal. You can understand those that have left, and but you've got to commend the ones that have stayed, as you say. And um, if there is any Hartlepool fans still watching on National League TV or listening on Heat on Me podcast, uh, we hope it hasn't been... Uh, we hope the country's been all right, but the game's been painful, I can understand. But uh, we hope you've in, enjoyed our company tonight as, as much as you could. But at the moment, Gateshead, just seeing this game out with five minutes left. 6-1 is the scoreline. Ball played back to Harness. Harness, a good vision to... Oh, a lovely little flick there. As Brown does very well, gets it back. He look, laid it off to Francis. Francis tried to put the ball out there to Allen. But Hanging Man did very well to... The biggest surprise there was that it didn't get there from uh, Francis. Yeah. yeah well. Oh, that doesn't look good. Oh, he's put is that uh, Gray. He's oh, pulled. Foul. Up. Foul. foul. Yeah, he's pulled up there. Don't know if he's caught the back of his heel as yeah, he's running towards it. Let's what. Don't think it really surmised from that. Could be similar to the one on uh, Luke Hannon first half, I think. We're unfortunate that it's miles away from where we are. Yeah, it's. Um, the the pull up was more noticeable than the than the foul, but 
But it's a good opportunity for Hartlepool to get the ball in the six-yard box here. And uh, Cow Daly's put, what a class team to be alive. So a big thank you everyone that has messaged us. I'm having to read them out. It's been a busy game. We've got three minutes remaining here. Hartlepool have a free kick on the right-hand side of the box. It's crossed in. It's up in the air. Yeah. It's over the, oh. over the top there. And Water... Was it Waterfall or... Um, kind of see the shirt number yes it was waterfall he should have maybe hit got the goalkeeper working on that one there but just lifted it over the ball it's tom parks was it tom parks was it mm. apologies but you're right yeah and once he's got there you think he's just got to direct in that well, far well, corner well, well, you give the match you have to. i will give you the attendance tonight 2685 including 1,313 away supporters. Well, over 1,300 away supporters. Fantastic support. But Gates said on the attack again. Hannon, right-hand side, driving forward. Bodies coming into the box, but Hannon just slows it down, pulls it back across. There's Francis. Booty, Ollie, Booty. They're just passing it around the edge of the box. And Gates said upside, now, upside, Francis, upside, he's upside. offside. But um, I say over 2,000, was it 2,400? Yeah, this is 2,600, I think. 2,600, uh, amazing attendance. They've been treated to a fantastic exhibition of uh, Gated's football. And um, with six games remaining after this in the league, it's a perfect time to be hitting form, Mark. I know we, we alluded to it in the build-up and early in the game that if Gated could get a win here, they could move as high as fourth. Well, you can start to look at that now, Gated fans, and think, you know, this could be the, a great platform to bounce off. Yeah, I mean that's a big thing, isn't it? You've got to you've got to build on the momentum of this and, and the confidence that it's given given Gateshead. Um, I look at it the other side. I look at you know what what does this do for pools? I think I'm right in saying the five points above relegation as it stands. They've got to react to this, and it's time for for players to to stand up and be counted. Yeah. That's what Kevin Phillips will demand of them, of course, and, and that's it, what the supporters it, will rightly demand of them. And it's that stage of the season where you you're playing for your contract for next season as well for a lot of players, and uh, you've got to stand up and be counted and um, as you say Kevin Phillips will be asking for that for the remainder of the season and it'll probably make up a few decisions for him as well yeah a few players might have oh lovely oh, flick from Hannon to Warman the former Cambridge men oh. linking up Warman gets past his man but just trailing foot just clears it away there and Gated still trying to build as Ollie gives it back to Story Ollie He's seen Hannon. Good vision. Hannon, can he whip one in? He can. It's towards the back post. Oh, Alan was there and the ball goes out for a corner. Gates it's still dangerous right into the last minute. We speak about levels. and That's what they've shown. They've kept those levels high. Um, yes, it's been slightly easier in the last sort of 15 where the game's over, well, well over. They've still tried to keep that passing game going. They've played some lovely stuff. Oh, they're going to bring the ball in here. Float it in. Oh, nearly an own goal. And a throw over the ball. From on the line, more or less, that, there that really would have summed it up. Yeah, nobody's reacted to the short corner. Well, Gates said Greg Ollie going over again to take corner again. We have just over 20 seconds of normal time remaining here. The full official does have the board, I think it's four minutes, but we'll confirm that very shortly when it does get raised. Oh, headed on, it's all it's in the back seven, Tom Allen. Just ghosted through the slight of glance of header, but he found the corner of the net and Gateshead round this off with seven goals. What a brilliant moment for Tom Allen. What an absolutely brilliant moment. And look at every single Gateshead oh, wow. player going Se on. Well, seven goals, seven minutes added on here to compound the misery on Hartlepool United. And at the moment, Gateshead will be savouring every one of those last seven minutes. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant moment for for Tom Allen. Mentioned his um, his injury issues. Mentioned everything going on, and and he, it, it's a, it's a lovely moment from it really is. A lot of hard work's gone into that goal, and not just on tonight. Yeah. Well, Hartlepool, there'll be a lot of questions asked in the. Once again, in the training ground in the next few days. Which is Rue wins the header on there and Dufus kind of keep the ball in and out it goes for a gated throw. Well, Kieran Evans is your man of the match. 
it could have been a number of any players. I don't think I would have given it. Uh, yeah, I really don't. I don't I think anyone's had a, a poor game. I don't think anyone's really stood out more than anyone else. Everyone. I'm glad. It, I'm glad it wasn't us having to make the decision. But uh, Francis just lets the ball run into Hartlepool's possession. Ferguson I'm trying to play with a little bit of tempo now. Hartlepool. As Ferguson turn around. Well, Featherston plays the ball back to Waterfall and ball down the right hand side. Can they try and carve something open here, Hartlepool? Have they got one last chance to pull something back? Good movement. Ball brought into the centre into the side net, and but that was a good move. And I do, really, it took um, what a full. 47 minutes for Hartlepool to create something to set them off. Yeah, kind of what they were doing first part of the first half there, wasn't it? Getting down gear sides, uh, right and left hand side. And I thought it looked like they went in at first, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's gone in the... uh, Some people are saying Hannant, man of the match in our chat, but the ball comes in. It's been headed away by Dejon Brown, brought down and laid off. And Dejon Brown can take this time to. Pulled the ball up on the far side. He's under pressure and lays it back to Kent Richardson. And then all the way back to Harness. Well, if we had to pick one for the Hidomi podcast commentary and National League TV, I would have put Francis's name in the hat. Um, pivotal in a lot of things here tonight. And uh, you could have had Whelan in there as well. Not very often we agree, Dave, but I think I'd agree. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, Francis just gets a foot to it, but... Also Ferguson, Ferguson's ball forward, hits off a Gator player and Gator can just pick it up. Ball played back to Harness and Gator now try and build from the back and Francis. It's just, it's just been so easy second half. Yeah, it's, uh, I haven't wanted to say that too much, but the ball out to Allen on the far side, Gator dragging forward. Is there an eighth in the offering? Allen still going, tries to get past Jameson, come out and the ball goes out for a goal kick. I tell you, he'll not be happy there. There's John Brown. He's <laughs> sat in the middle on his own. But wow. uh, we'll, we'll forgive him. Still pulls fan staying. Unbelievable. Yeah, there's a good five, six hundred of them over there. It's uh, commend every last one of them. I Jameson just, with the goal kick. I just hope the uncertainty of the club and the, you know, the issues that everyone's spoken about, I hope they get resolved soon because, you know, Harley Pool United fans deserve better than, than, than what they've got and what they've had over the last couple of seasons yeah, yeah. it's uh but ollie on the run forward it's a beautiful ball ollie chasing it down he has got men coming in the center does john brown oh, oh headed just, away had to be done last ditch defending just winding up there wasn't he he was winding up to hit that well oh magnate clapping there three minutes still to go of the seven minutes added on here Francis just holding the side of his head there. I hope he's all right. Yeah, he's fine. I was just adjusting his headband there, protective one, of course, after his fractured skull earlier in the season. In comes the delivery from Francis. It's low and towards the near post. It's going to be hooked clear now. Kent Richardson wins the header, but didn't guide it <laughs> too far. To so, hadn't managed to pick it up. He played all the way back to Harness. And the ball, oh, ball out here to Francis. Lovely stuff. Francis carries it forward, plays it inside to Brown. Brown, lovely touch. Can he lay it? Pull it back across. He tries. Defender's leg disrupts the path of the ball. And now Cook can bring the ball forward. The work rate getting back as well, though. That's kind of summed up Gates in second half. They've done everything right going forward. But they've also cut the back end. Uh, as they should, you know, they've stayed firm at the back, they've stayed disciplined and organised, um, and they've, they've worked really hard defensively. Sounds daft talking about defensive stuff, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. a ball <laughs> forward the there, side. the yeah. offside flag is raised on Dizawaru, and uh, well, an evening that a lot of Hartlepool players and fans will want to forget. Gate said, seeing it out here, still on the march forward with the ball when they get the opportunity. As Allen, Hannon still in acres of space over here. And Ferguson looks very tired from the ground he's covered, trying to mark two men for most of the game. 
It's a bit of a shock that that hasn't been resolved, by the way. You would think he would have um, either you know pushed, brought the midfielder across, or the 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 winger in front, but he's been given no cover, has he really? No, you've got a feel for him. I mean, it's been two v one, even three v one at times because Gator they played in triangles in this this sort of area just in front of uh, in front of their dugout. Well, we have just over 30 seconds remaining here. And if you are just joining us, Gates at seven, Hartlepool one. But Gates it's on the attack again as Dijon Brown lays it off to Booty. Booty on the edge of the area, pulls it through. Oh, Francis has got the ball, pulls it across. Couldn't get the power on it, and Jameson just collects the ball. That's it, Dave. I think it is. We've got about 10 seconds remain here. Now, the referee... Hasn't blew the whistle yet. Ball bounces all the way through. Robbie Tinkler plays it to Hannant. Gator okay, just passed their way out of trouble. And now easy that was, on though. the attack, yeah, it was too easy. And the ball played across to Kenton Richardson. The referee looks at his watch. He still hasn't blew yet. And Gator on the attack again. Allen on the far side. Up against two players. Gator players getting forward in numbers still. Ollie, edge of the area. Goes for the curling shot. Oh, Jimson scrambles across. There it is. And there is the full-time whistle. Gateshead thrash Hartlepool 7-1 here at Gateshead International Stadium and really doing their playoff hopes the world of good. And Mark, what? <laughs> I'm running out of superlatives for this performance. The wrong words to describe that second half performance. First half was very much 50-50. Second half, you'd be generous saying it was 99-1 because Gateshead have just destroyed Hartlepool setting off. Unbelievable performance. I think you're right. Ed Francis man the match. But I tell you what, it's a very hard pick. You could pick anyone in, in a white shirt tonight. Um, Hartlepool, it's all about reaction now. It has to be about that reaction. I think it's Halifax on Friday. They need to go and get a win there and show the fans that they can put this behind them because the lads and lasses over there that have stayed at the International Stadium and watched this every part of this game, they deserve every bit of credit in the world. They deserve better than what they got tonight. And, you know, you just hope from a northeast point of view that we can have a stronger hearty for United soon because they deserve so much more. Well, the fans are going over. Um, there is one or two hands and gestures being thrown their way, but they're going over to thank the fans that did stay. And as you say, Mark, uh, uh, a tough night. A tough night. Really tough, well, there's no other way to put it. It was a really tough night and, and a really, you know, as I say, I mean, Hartlepool, just a, just a brilliant club and, and, as I say, deserve better than this. But we shouldn't focus entirely on them. I mean, Gateshead have been sensational tonight. Just such a great display. The passing, the movement, the intensity, the energy. Reacting to falling behind. We shouldn't forget that. that yeah. That's the biggest part of it for me. Just a, a wonderful performance, a team performance. And, and you know, we're going well, to Friday buzzing now. <laughs> How rare do you see the, the linesman getting a, a, <laughs> a round of applause? But the real round of applause is going to come for the Gator players as they leave the pitch now, Ed Francis takes selfies with the ball boys. It's absolutely fantastic stuff. Hartlepool, they'll, they'll come back another day. But tonight, it's all about Gateshead. Gateshead 7, Hartlepool United 1. And Gateshead marched on further into the playoffs. And with six games remaining, it's all to play for. And it's all in Gateshead's hands. Well, we're going to sign off here. Thank you very much for everyone that joined us on National League TV and, of course, on the Heat Army audio uh, stream. To any Hartlepool fans that joined us, uh, thank you for staying with us. We hope that the commentary was all right, um, result aside. Uh, to Gated fans, we'll be back on Good Friday when Gated entertain Rochdale here at Gated Enters Stadium as they want to continue their push for playoff glory. But now it's time to hang up the microphone, have a heart attack and rest for the rest of the night. Thank you very much, everybody, and goodbye.